Okay, let's do this. All right, a little AC. Kind of warm out today. It's supposed to hit about close to 100 degrees out here, so freaking yay. <laughs> Today's video. So today is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna do sort of a installation slash review, product review, so to speak, of something called the Progressive Ignition Distributor. So to reference the last video that I did last week, the idea behind what we're gonna do today is further control of the engine, right? See, the thing about ignition systems on old cars is they're essentially static. You can customize them and you can, you know, put different um, uh, wires and, and different uh, electrical setups. Now, okay, why the hell are you messing with timing? Why didn't you just leave it stock and stuff? Well, this is all part of squeezing as much as you can out of your current setup, throwing uh, performance parts at cars is fine. For us guys that have done it for a while, you know, it, it's not as exciting as squeezing, as squeezing as much as you can out of what you already got. Like finding that extra tuning piece, finding finding the, the extra horsepower hidden in the overall beast. It's a challenge, basically. What can we do with what we got to get the maximum amount of performance, right? Reliability, performance, and economy. You know, this is sort of like, we've never tried this before. It's new technology. It's something new, you know, it's it's, it's an innovation. We want to check it out. And we, we're, we think it's pretty cool. I hope you guys think it's pretty cool. And uh, I'll show you the whole process of what we went through. That's what this video is for. And um, yeah, I hope you guys like it. And we'll go from there. All right, guys, we're back in my uh, dad's garage, as you can see. And uh, ooh, look at that sunny, hot day today. And remember this thing? It's my dad's Plymouth Satellite. We're working on this today. And uh, that's my dad. So say hi, dad. How's it going, guys? <laughs> What's your name? Well, my name is Genaro, and they call me TJ. All right, and let's get a little uh, introduction about yourself. Uh, how long have you been messing with cars? Gosh, 40 years. 40 years, huh? Yeah. And uh, how long have you had this thing? This this uh, satellite right here, this, this car here. I want to say seven years. About a, more or less. Six or seven years? Yeah. And this isn't your first satellite, right? Oh, no. No, no, no. My first satellite was a 73. It was a similar color. And it was a, just a basic Sebring, you know. It wasn't a plus. I didn't know anything, didn't know anything about cars at the time. Would you say that's the car that taught you how to work on cars, basically? Oh, yeah. This car is basically where I got, you know, baptized. And so what got you into Mopars? Well, my, my friends had Camaros and Mustangs. But anyway, I was the oddball. I didn't want to be like everybody else. And I just caught my eye, and that was it. So what do we got today? Well, okay, a little bit of story on, on the thing over the years. What I found with, you know, carbureted engines and, and uh, distributor cars is that uh, getting the distributor is, is a, it's kind of almost mystical, you know? If anybody's ever tried it, it's a pain. It's a trial and error, you try different things. So, uh, I found this company that... Uh, so what do you got, is that, is that the company right yeah, there? Yeah, uh, Progressive Ignition, maybe you guys have heard about it or not. All right, and uh, are we even sponsored by them at all? No, oh, white, no. no. no uh, these not, guys, my, trust my, me. not myself or him are sponsored by any of these people. Oh, I, I wish I was so I can, you know, get a discount. <laughs> first of all, this, this wasn't cheap. Okay, okay. and but, we'll talk about that a little bit later, <laughs> but yeah. But anyway, long story short, this is what it's about. All right, so, so let's, let's see what's in here. What came with this whole thing? Oh, I came into that box. So Nice shirt, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. It's also 40 years old. <laughs> nice. So anyway, this, what this is, is a distributor. And uh, so is that like part of somebody, like MSD or someone, or is that no, by themselves? This is, uh, this is not MSD. This is an independent company. The guy started it. I read a little bit about uh, what he did. This guy found that uh, nobody was doing something what he has right now. Basically, this distributor is, uh, you can dial the initial timing, you can dial the, you can recurve the distributor at any given time uh, re remotely via your phone. It works via Bluetooth. Yeah, but- And, and so real quick, phone. why would you want to do the, why, why, why? Why were we okay. doing this? Long story short, okay. So whenever you do, you know, Back in the 70s, or depending on the era, you had different fuels, fuel was different, performance expectation was different. And so the, the factory did a very good job uh, getting things calibrated from the carburetor to the ignition timing, uh, accounting for everything, and to get it where you need to be 
that would work all, uh, best all the way around. So what stock was, right, when, what they put out? What they put out. But once you start messing with cars, and even today, even if you don't mess with, if you got a car that's factory from the 70s, and then you start it right now, it won't work the same because a lot of things are different. And once you start dealing with uh, uh, cam modifications, uh, intake manifolds, carburetor, head, uh, you know, porting, and among, among other things, uh, then you really change everything. Basically start from scratch. And a lot of it's fuel and ignition timing, but not so much the initial timing, the recurving of when it should come in. It's really like a, almost like a black magic type of deal. And guys, we're gonna do this uh, step by step. So you're gonna follow along with yeah. us. Obviously we're not gonna go through the entire thing because some of it might be a little boring, but we're gonna show you the differences between the two distributors when we pull that old one out, right? Yeah. And then we're gonna show you what, what are the differences yeah. and what to look for when if you wanna do this, Yeah. right? Yeah. All so, right, so what all did we get? What did we get? We got so, the distributor, what else comes with this? Oh, you get this and you get, um, oh, the wiring, which already kind of plugged in. Okay, and what comes with this wire? Is it like a lot of wires or is no. a computer with so it? No, so all you get is basically, the, the, it comes with this uh, harness. Okay. Okay. And this harness basically goes to your um, power. It w works on direct, you know, 12 volt power. Uh, you bypass the ballast resistor. And then you also works out of the... Uh, the, the so the one's coil. ignition, one's coil. Correct. One's, one's ignition, one coil, one ground. Okay. And this is, uh, you also have your tack. This goes to your tack. And <clears throat> that way you don't have to connect it to the coil. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. Oh, okay. Well, it's pretty simple. How about we get started? Let's get it done. All right, guys. So this is what we're going to work on. You see that thing back there? That's what we got to remove. Distributor. So I'm going to set you up on a little bit of a tripod and do some time lapse. And uh, yeah, we'll get back to you when we're done. All right. Also guys, side note, uh, when you're working on anything on this engine or any engine and it's electrical or actually pretty much anything you're working on as far as the engine's concerned, do yourself a favor, disconnect the battery. You wanna be safe, you know? Always, always disconnect the battery, the ground side, you know, just it's, it's a security precaution. So, all right, let's get back to it. All right, guys, one more thing. My dad wanted to show you something uh, that we got to do in order to set the system up. So there's a, a, a few processes you got to do before you get started on swapping out the distributor. So go ahead, dad, give, give, let him know. So what you do is basically you find top dead center. Okay, so we're going to find top dead center using something like this. Now, what is this? It's a remote start. It's all it is. It's okay. connected to your relay. So point where you hook this up to? Right there. That's the starter relay, okay? Yeah, and you can get the positive either from there or from here. So we're bypassing the starter relay to spin Correct. the engine? Okay, yeah. now, what do we gotta make sure this thing doesn't turn on? Oh, you, first of all, you can take the coil off, this ignition coil, just in case, and the ignition should be off. There you go. Okay, and so now we can re rotate it, no big deal? Yeah. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna rotate to find what? Top dead center? Correct. And then after that, what do we gotta do? Once you to find top dead center, then you're gonna uh, advance the pulley to 10 degrees advanced at the at the, uh, at the timing cover, and then that's when you can remove this, do this trip again. Awesome, okay, so I'm gonna show you what he's talking about in a minute. We're gonna find top dead center real quick, and then we're gonna do that, okay? See you guys in a sec. All right, so we found top dead center? Correct. All right, so let's take a better, a better, quicker look at this. Okay. Hold on, so the, which one's number one? That one. Okay, and that goes up to... So you follow it, and then it's this one. If you they take the cap off, you notice the rotor's pointing in the general direction of that cylinder. Okay. So that you know that's top dead center. And so how do we know on this, on the engine that it's, that is... Well, uh, you can remove a plug and then you could feel the piston's gonna be up there. And also, at, guys, at the timing. There's, a, there's these old cars come with timing marks on the bottom here. And I don't know if you can see that down there, but there is the crankshaft, the balancer. And there it is, there's zero. So we know by that, hopefully, that thing's zero. You can verify by where the rotor's at, right? Okay, so now we have to rotate the engine manually to uh, 10 degrees advance at the pulley. All right, guys, so now you can disconnect the battery, and we're rotating the engine to top 10 degrees before top dead center. So we're rotating the actual crankshaft to get the, the, the engine set up so that the timing's correct for the new distributor. So we're going to do that right now. Okay, guys, so now we're ready to remove the distributor itself. We're going to use this tool right here, which is essentially a distributor wrench. And this is just to take off the bolt that's holding down a paw that actually holds the, uh, the distributor down. Cool. All right, guys, so it's out. And this is a distributor that was in here. So guys, you wanna make sure that you plug in the hole back there with something. 
that's not gonna fall inside of there because it, it's exposed, the internals of the engine are exposed now. Yeah. So you wanna make sure that nothing back there's gonna fall in. So just that's kind of a FYI, right? All right guys, real quick, before I continue, I wanted to show you a few differences between what, what we got going on here. So obviously we're upgrading to this distributor here and we explained what the benefits of this thing are, but let me give you sort of a history lesson of what's going on with these three different distributors. They all serve the same function, right? Uh, ignite the fuel that's in the car by using uh, electricity coming from the coil. Now this is an old school Chrysler distributor, right Dad? This is, yeah. right? That's the actually the original distributor for the car. Oh, so that's what it came with, right? Yeah. So this thing here, this is pretty much what it came with. And now you see the little spinning bits inside of there? That right there is called a Hall Effect distributor. It uses a magnet with a reluctor that you see those little points on there? As it passes by, it cuts uh, current to the negative side of the coil. And when it does that, it sends a spark to the corn sparring cylinder. And these work pretty good from what year to what year? Well, they really, some of them started in 72 to about really maybe uh, late 70s, 80s, maybe. Yep. And so this thing, the way this works is, you know, you get your power, uh, your ground, and this right here, vacuum pod, this controls timing a little bit further yeah. for drivability. Yeah, part but part, yeah. reality, inside of here, there's weights that control the timing depending on the speed of the engine. And I right? fiddled with those. I mean, countless times, and I got it to where it's the best, but it's still, you know. The problem it, with this, yeah. guys, is that it's, it's old technology. It's, right. you know, it was cool for the time, but it's old, and there's been progress done technology wise that could improve upon this. So we took this out, and we got this. Now, what is this? That's a standalone distributor. It does the same thing, but you've got the module here. Standalone, what do you mean by that? Well, it provides its own little uh, box that provides the spark there. So this is an ignition module. Correct. Okay. And this one requires a separate box. So this one, that's right. This one requires an electrical box that goes right. hooked up to the side somewhere, right? The firewall. Okay, so this requires a little computer for it. Correct. That's separate. This has the computer built in right here. Correct. And it's a two-wire hookup? Yeah, and kind of like the General Motors, but the nice thing about this one is on the side. And uh, it requires less space. And why did you go to this? The reason I went to that one is because it had a better shaft, and the, the shaft and the Mopars they, they start to wobble after a while. So you don't you don't get the right tolerances, the right gap here. So when you go and you spin it, the right gap where? Between the reluctor oh. and the and the sensor. So okay. what happens when you turn? It just you know uh, alters the gap, and that's when you have a lot of misfires and, and so you notice it. the difference in the reluctor or the wheel that's in there this is because this works off of a, mag a magnet right magnet right. okay so it's a mag drive steel uh system S similar concept to that down there so that's these are the differences between these two and so now we're upgrading this because of the tunability right yeah this one this is so just, is there anything wrong with this one no it, i've actually dialed that one on as about as best as you can but i think it can go you know you can there's always room for all right so so old school reliable modern stuff yeah. and then tunability right correct awesome okay so just wanted to show you guys a little bit differences of what's going on why we're doing what we're doing but yeah so all right we'll continue here also guys i want to show you real quick this is the original uh distributor cap for it and all it is is just a, a different style of junctions most mopars use this style of junction it's it's called a female style uh on the other one the one this one uses a stud style this is a positive locking uh connection and these are better for correct connection but these are just, you know, old school. We might switch the other one over. There's not a huge difference between them. They, they both work well. This is just provides a more locking uh, connection. All right. Also, guys, real quick, I wanted to show you guys the interior of the new distributor, just to show you the difference between those two. So what's what we're looking at here? So that right there is a Prinket circuit board. That's all your wireless stuff, right? Correct. And are there any weights on this? No weights. No weights, no mechanical, nothing. 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 Awesome. And where's the contact for the ignition? Right here. It's, oh. it's basically just similar to the, the pickup coil, the same thing. It uses the same principle, but the basically it's a mini computer. <laughs> that's awesome. really what that is. And oh. all that's determined by all this electronics there. That controls all your initial timing as well as the recurve distributor. And you can make your own ta tables as far as, you know, it's an infinite tag. And what are those uh, black markings on there? Well, when you set up the distributor, according to the directions, if I understood it correctly, uh, when you put it in there, then you, you, uh, you, you, you know, you turn the rotor to where it's the nearest uh, hash. You see how it's, it's, you got some markings there? Oh, is that how we set it up for? Correct. Oh, okay. So once, we know that's at 10 degrees advance at top, at, uh, well, not at, the, uh, at the number one cylinder. So once you slot, once it goes in there, you turn the distributor to the nearest 
of hash. So it's nearest to that, you turn it there. Okay, so it's just for reference timing. It's a reference timing. This is a completely different system. I mean, it, it, that's all basically for the computer to know where it is at, where it's all at. Right. All right, good to know. Let's all right, that. so we're ready to put it back in there. Anything else that we got to do to put it back in there? Yeah, well, what I like to do, you know, before I, you know, put in the distributor, I take my uh, cover, whatever, my improvised cover out of there, and I like to see more or less where the slot is angled. That way I know more or less where to angle this. So I know that the top dead center is was on that side. So this is what I do. Okay, so the distributor is in, it's seated properly. So now what you do is you look for the nearest hash and it's right here. So what I do, I, I rotate it to that position. Remember, this is just for reference. And there it is. So Okay, so you know we're gonna we're gonna swap over the wires now yeah. from that cap to that cap, but now we know that it's positioned correctly. Correct. Awesome. All right, let's continue. So now um, the distributor cap's on. So now we have to remove the wires here to this distributor. So now we know the orientation of the number one cylinder has moved. It's moved to this point. This is the number one cylinder on this cap. So why do you keep track of all that stuff, right? Yeah. And on this one... The so you guys one, with the coil packs and stuff don't need to care about any yeah. of this stuff. This is how it was done back in the day. So the number one cylinder is on this one. So this puppy going to go to that one okay so we just uh basically go off the firing order firing order so okay. so so you're going to go to the right it will take the right so one eight five four six two three i think so What's so we're doing it's clockwise clockwise awesome so let's swap them over right. hey guys now that uh the distributor's in here we're going to start wiring this thing in now pretty simple wiring we're looking at black for ground just basic ground and we're going to run this to the actual uh the battery itself just to get a secure ground. Uh, the yellow is actually for the negative side of the coil that's sitting over there, and the red is for the positive side of the coil. And then there's a tachometer um, wire, the square wire that's right here. Now this is, can go straight to a tachometer. So pretty simple setup. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and wire this in, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right guys, so we got this thing wired in. Uh, everything's in, even though you can't see none of the stuff we did, it's in. Uh, what we're doing now is making sure that the vacuum signal is coming to the distributor now dead why is that important on this particular distributor because real quick for reference old cars had a vacuum signal to a pod Correct. to mess with timing what does this do with that well this senses a manifold absolute vacuum and basically from there it dictates what it's going to do um, now so it uses vacuum as a reference correct Okay, so the, it's yeah. basically a map sensor in this situation. Right. Yeah, so uh, the full vacuum is all the time. Ported vacuum is only some of the time, and that only works on old distributors. This, because it's a map sensor, it needs all the vacuum at all times. Correct. Okay, perfect. So we're going to route that up, and then we'll continue from there. All right. And now we can bring out our tablet or our phone, bring up the app for the progression ignition. Yes, all this is basically the heart of the system. This is what lets you mess with that distributor that's in there. So we're going to turn it on, press connect, to connect to the to the unit and we can all we can actually set in what we want based on the size of this engine so we can do what's called a, a table a set table or a starting point table and it creates a table for the engine that you have to something to work off of so it gets started the engine runs and then you can work off whatever parameters you want to mess with but for the moment we're just going to get this started we're going to verify that it's actually at 10 degrees before top dead center using a timing light and uh yeah we'll see where we go from there uh now we're going to hook up our timing light right and we're going to check that the timing marks are correct it says that we got to make sure it's at 10 degrees before top dead center as it's running if we need to adjust it to obviously leave the distributor a little bit loose so that we can turn it backwards or forwards to get the timing right at 10 degrees before we start tuning and things of that nature so we'll go ahead and start doing that right now All right, perfect. We just verified that this thing is firing at all cylinders at the 10 degrees before top dead center. Everything seems to be fine. You saw it turned on pretty good. So now all we gotta do is let it warm up to normal operating temperature, but it runs. So yay, what do you think, Dad? 
Hold up. What, what, what do you think? You happy? I'm like, a, it's like Christmas. But wait, wait, we, we're not done yet. We got to take this for a drive, right? Absolutely. We'll get back to you guys once we are driving around in this thing, see how it feels. But it seems to be starting up pretty good. Oh, it's alive. It's alive. All right, guys. So we got this thing to work. Uh, it's pretty good. There is a couple of things to note, actually, and I'm going to show you that in a second. Real quick, though, before I show you that. This does come with instructions on how to set that up and everything that I just went over is going to be in those instructions. Anyway, uh, let me show you what we had to do to get this thing uh, All right, correct. Guys, so real quick, this is what I wanted to show you. This is the app, like I was showing you earlier, uh, for tuning and running this distributor that we put in there. Now, one thing to keep in mind is you go to connect and it's a Bluetooth connection, right? And right now we're actually hooked up to the distributor itself. We have a generator which actually generates the, the timing curves. So how you want this distributor to function with the engine that you have going on. It goes based off of, well, let, let's let's look at it real quick here. Okay, and if you can see there, Oops. it has you know, the engine type, so eight cylinders, uh, the, you know, what RPM you want the thing, what idle timing you want out of it, the max RPM you want all the timing to come in and how much timing, uh, and it has the vacuum and degree, so how much degrees you want the vacuum secondary to kick in, because it does, actually uh, simulate a vacuum advance and we have our vacuum in kilopascals and uh, it, it shows you just their start vacuum and where you want it to be and your end vacuum so your min and your maxes right and then you got a uh, rev limit in this system so you can generate a table out of these so let me show you what that looks like so you go you know eight cylinders and now what we had to do with this thing to get it to run right or to even start correctly is we actually had to go into the generator first now this thing says that when you when you set it up, you should right out of the gate, put it in, wire it up, and then start it. You should be able to start it at a, at a sit, set given output that it already has. We weren't able to do that um, for whatever reason. So once we went through the generator, it actually worked perfectly. It turned on perfectly. So, so we had to do that one extra step. Uh, we had to set this up like you're looking at. We wanted uh, idle speed of 1,000. So we just adjusted that. It started still. And that's just to get this to, to idle correctly because this has a bigger camshaft in it and so it, it chops a little bit if, you, if it's at a lower RPM, which sounds cool, but it's not very good for setting up timing. So let's go to our degrees of timing. We wanted this at 15 degrees at initial timing. That's kind of how I have mine set up too. Let's see, 30 degrees max timing is, is usually what you most cars use anyway. What you normally mess with is at what RPM you get it at. So we're gonna go with 3,500. We're gonna leave the kilopascals alone for a minute. They, they don't recommend messing with these two until you have all your initial stuff set up. So don't mess with these min and max vacuums until you, you, you know what this thing's doing. And then our, our rev limit, we're gonna set that up to 4,500 RPM because this engine's never really gonna see that much RPM anyway. So, okay, so there we go. So we do a generate table. Now this is gonna create this fancy looking thing. Now you see this? What this is doing is it's telling you what degrees it's gonna change at what different RPMs at the bottom here and at what vacuum. So these are a scale of kilopascals right here on the side and down here is our RPM. And in the middle here is where it's going to just go up and down, up and down, up and down. What you can do here is once you like this, this table here, once you see this table, you can go ahead and go to send, save, rev limit, or load last save table. So what you can do is go to send once you've generated this, which is what we had to do. We generated this table, then hit send, and suddenly this card turned on like it was a charm. So that's what we had to do. Now that doesn't mean that that's what you guys are gonna have to do if you guys go this route, but that's what we ended up having to do. Yeah, so another thing that I can see this working, you know, you can create a table uh, when the car is uh, cold. So mess with the table that we have here? Correct. And okay. then you could actually have a uh, uh, more advanced, more ignition timing so that the engine runs better. Uh, as you all know, when the engine gets hot, it, it idles uh, smoother and better. But uh, when you're able to advance the timing, it actually increases the RPM and it runs smoother. So this allows for better overall performance <laughs> while it's warming up. But once it's warmed up, you can change ta tables, change the tablet, another another uh, grid that you uh, created for a say a uh, normal operating temperature, a cold cold start, and so forth. To that point, while we're driving, we can actually see this in real time as it's selecting the different Correct. points, given the uh, 
the RPM range, right? So let's go back to, so, so you'll see the little RPM on the bottom there, right? So it'll actually, as it's going under different RPMs, it'll select the different uh, degrees it wants to be at. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, take this for a drive and uh, we'll show you what this looks like in action. All right, guys, real quick. Uh, we took this for a kind of a drive um, earlier after we did all the setup and uh, it did drive, it did run, but unfortunately had a bit of a miss. So, well, we did a, a little bit of diagnosing and one thing to keep in mind with these cars is this Chrysler product, and you guys are used to Mopars already know this, the infamous ballast resistor that sits back there. You see that white thing? Now that controls the ignition system to these things, the, the stock ignition system. Now, for some reason, we're having electrical issues with that problem, and I've had these issues, and I'm aware of these issues before. Shame on me for not addressing that earlier. Uh, but basically what we had to do is we had to bypass that to get direct 12 volts from the switch to the uh, the distributor. After we fix that, then we got this thing to run right. But just so you know, if you just run uh, your regular ignition wires, your rare, your regular like electrical to this distributor, it will not work. The Chrysler system for some reason runs through that uh, that ballast resistor, and the ballast resistor is kind of wonky. It doesn't quite give you 12 volts, and so it'll mess with the way the ignition system working, which basically means it'll it'll miss. And that's what we were having. It was missing here and there. It was miscommunicating. It wasn't working right. So what we did is we bypassed it real quick to see if it worked directly. You see that wire that's kind of hanging out of there? And it ran like beautiful. It ran perfect. It, it, it runs fine now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the ignition wire coming from the inside, route it to a relay, and that relay is going to give us true 12 volts from the battery at obviously a, a low amperage. A low, you know, we're not going to fry this thing. But... We want to get a true 12 volts and that's what we're going to do but just you know quick fyi if you guys are working on mopars be aware of that ballast resistor if you're wiring something that requires two 12 volts on these cars you might not get what you want so you might have to bypass them using relays and the such but just real quick fyi but yeah so so far so good it's just a minor setback but we're we're setting it up so we're going to button this up correctly wire it all and everything and then hopefully i can get you guys some footage of us driving this i'll do what i can so i'll see you guys in a bit all right all right guys, so um, here we are about to do our first test run of the rewired ignition system. So we put a relay into the system uh, so that it's constantly getting an accurate 12 volts out of the switch. So it was a convoluted thing and I'll show you guys what I did later, but right now we're gonna go for its main voyage. We're gonna go drive this thing and see how it does. And as you can see, it's already running on the app right here on this tablet. We got our RPMs, our map, which is our vacuum, and this is our timing advance. So as you can see, our timing is working right now. Now I wanted to show you something real cool. If I go here and I go to editor, it's, see that little bouncing around dial? That's actually telling you where the timing's at in real time. That's right. I'm gonna accelerate. So, so go ahead and so accelerate and show what it does. See, see how it's moving? See the curve? So, see that's, that's the timing right there. There you go. And let's go at 3000, see where it is. I want it no more than Perfect. One. So that's working how it's supposed to work. All right, so we're gonna drive this thing around and see how it reacts. All right guys, so we did a little bit of a power run um, and just wanted to let you know, right now we actually have the AC on, so if you hear that, sound that's the ac going uh the blower it blows really nicely actually for an old system it it is one r134 it you know works fine uh we did retrofit it so you know it works pretty good but what we're concentrating on is this thing and right now what we're doing is we're power tuning it we let it learn let it do its thing and it works just fine okay and so what i want to show you is we can actually go into any of these settings and right now what i did is i edited this one rpm range the 2400 or 2440 RPM, right? And so what I did is I can go up or I can go down. And what it's doing is let's put, let's say right there, let's go send. It just saved the system. See how it's highlighted red? So all of these values you see right here is one timing aspect of what's gonna happen with this vehicle at 2460 RPM. So we can program in what degrees we want at what RPM at what map setting. So basically infinite tuning on timing. It's pretty cool. We're gonna do a few more power runs. What we're looking for is at the very edge of detonation or knocking and pinging as it's normally called. And once we get to that edge, when we get to the point where it's starting to knock and ping, we'll back off a little bit. And at that point is where you get your maximum amount of performance and efficiency, reliability, all that stuff. So that's what we're doing here. But anyway, uh, we're gonna do a few more power runs and then we'll get back to you from there. 
All right, so power tuning this thing. How's it feel? Perfect, great. I don't, it's not locking. 3500 RPM. It just loves it. It's already better. So do you want more or do you want less? How do you want it? Okay, so let's bring the timing in a little sooner sooner to oh. unlocks and things all right let me reset it and i'll come back to you guys okay, all right so i just edited the timing curves and let's see what it does listen to the engine and see if it knocked anything oh look holy moly that, there you go Woo! Five thousand. that was that was five thousand rpm wow all right so how did that feel that's perfect setting for that so leave it alone that's better than it ever been. What do you think? Good? Thumbs up? <laughs> Dude, this car could do that before, but I will get the knock and ping in it and I'll have to, have to ease off the throttle. There's no knock and ping in there. Awesome. And, then, and I got the same performance. So, so I don't get any detonation and performance. Correct. Awesome. Uh, All right. So we're going to keep running this thing. But real quick, guys, I want to give a shout out to um, Progression Ignition. Awesome product so far. The the uh, tunability of this thing is insane. That is, this thing right here made all the difference in the world. All right, guys. So there you go. It was a, a success. I think this worked out really, really well. Um, it's really hot out here. Sorry, <laughs> give me a minute here. But uh, as you can see, it wow, that is bleached and light. So what did you think? Good. Thumbs up? All right. Thumbs up. So, thumbs up for us. Once again, thank you guys for coming along with us to this uh, odd video. I know it was different, uh, but I hope you guys learned something along the way. And um, shout out real quick to Progression Ignition. Uh, these guys, you know, they make a good product. It worked well. There were a few learning curves, but obviously with everything there is. So, yeah. I mean, give these guys a look up. If they work for you, they make things for Fords, Chevys, Mopars, uh, I'll put the link in the description below. Also guys, uh, don't forget to comment anything else you guys wanna see. If you guys wanna know more about that ignition system, um, you know, obviously there, you can go to the website. We're gonna do a long-term uh, deal on this. So anything else you wanted to say? I just wanna shout out to my son. He's a wiring man here expert. And uh, I, without I'm him- I'm so not an expert, no, no, but okay. He, he figured out what was the problem. <laughs> he installed a, a relay to it. And there it is. I mean, expert. Yeah. Anyway, guys, it's been fun. Once again, thank you for joining me today. Uh, if you guys like what you saw today in the video, please like, share, subscribe, all the things you can do on YouTube. And uh, all right, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.